impede the work that's going on, probably. It's like a little crack. Yeah. Fissure. Looks like there's a C pen in there. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, right down there. Let's follow this guy up. Can we get down into that uh, fissure? <laughs> No. Oh. <laughs> I knew the answer to that. I was, it was a test. A plus. You can see it in Argus. Yeah. Okay. Oh my god, look the at that. Oh, that's that's nice so view. cool. <laughs> Some ripples. If you're just watching Sat Feed One, you can go to the quad and see the view of Argus looking down on Hercules. It's very cool. I feel like we're joyriding right now on a cool <laughs> little highway. Yeah. That Argus view is awesome. Yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> and that's where our highway ends. Yeah. If you were asked, have any of you been so startled that you jumped when something came into view? Sea spider. <laughs> we were pretty startled, and it's evident by the uh, audio. If you watch the second deep story of jelly that we found, we were close to the bottom when we were just looking at something zoomed in, and we zoomed out and panned over, and there was just a ghost in the water column wow. <laughs> because its resting state was very ghost-like, and it was oh. just there, and it snuck up on us. <laughs> Bridge nav. I think this one would more be step, some 100 meters, zero, one, five. Kind of an ideal spot Thank for you. corals, right? Like a little step here, but not much yet. I think when we get shallower. Yeah. Definitely the Ramilla Gorgia militaris. Oh, and there's some Chrysogorgia. Yeah. Now, do you guys say? Chrysogorgia or Chrysogorgia? I say Chrysogorgia because that's what Steve says. Okay, that's what but I'm going to start doing now, too. Yeah. Steve could totally mess us up. So I'd be like, that's what I'm saying. Would you He's like a Pinut Booter sandwich? And I'd be yeah. like, I guess that's how you say it. Yeah. Pinut <laughs> Booter. It's like Barcelona. <laughs> I love how these. Sorry. Yeah, this is cool terrain. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. the Steve Gorgia is still Steve Gorgia questionable. <laughs> still up, still up in the air. Okay. <laughs> or is it Steve Gorgia? Yeah. <laughs> ah. oh. I guarantee you, if I saw it written down, that's what I would say. <laughs> and also, really slowly, I'd be like Steve Gorgia. <laughs> there's another black coral in the crack, and then there's a bad wow, patch on this. the right. <laughs> cool this is yeah this is yeah. not exactly sure this is a long ridge yeah yeah strike yeah i'm kind of interested so for the for these being as old as they are they're really we have not seen much faulting mm. i wonder if we're seeing a little bit now. would we be able to even identify it with all this manganese crust yeah, I, I mean, I just, the we would see it in the bathymetry, like, uh, you know, linear features, but. Uh, that looked like a precious like coral it. over there, and. Where? Chrysler Gorge. Oh, we just passed it. Oh. I can't how 
it's just so angular and jagged here. Yeah. So cool. We have not really encountered terrain like this, other than maybe at the top of the last seamount where there were these high standing blocks. But you can see some columnar jointing there, or some faint evidence of it. Bit ahead. Yeah, yeah just at the end of your leash. Here. Coming down a little bit. Okay, a little bit more. Yeah, let's stay up here. Adam, Can't do excited. you know what could have created a trench like this, if you were asking? <clears throat> yeah, we were just kind of chatting about it. So, um, from what we're seeing right in front of us, we with the, the look of kind of massive flows with columnar jointing, one of the things that could happen is that these could be more solid, more resistant to, is that to collapse. Mm -hmm. And so could be looking at basically stuff has worn away or fallen away that was not as consolidated or massive as the stuff that's left behind, leaving these kind of narrow ridges, but we are on uh, a ridge on the seamount that would be like a, a rift zone where where eruptions emerged. Um, if there was enough erosion, you could start to see the, the material in the conduit, uh, which would look like this. So jury's out, but uh, it's definitely different than most of the terrain we've seen. Yeah, very cool. So a lot of the the jointing here seems to be kind of in the horizontal plane, uh, which would mean cooling coming from the side. So maybe either stuff has fallen over that way or uh, could very well be that we're in kind of a looking at uh, the remains of a conduit after erosion has happened. Yeah, so that's interesting, Adam. So this one's horizontal here, and the next one behind it's vertical. And Yeah, so that kind of suggests that maybe that fell over into the horizontal position. Oh, I see. So what the, or the direction of those uh, it indicates where the cooling was happening, the surface that was cooling. Mm -hmm. Typically, you'd expect it to be the top. It'd be a bit odd if it was from the side, but it could happen you know, within a dike that was... Uh, feeding an eruption coming up. Interesting. For the viewer asking, yes, this is the last dive of the season with Hercules. So enjoy. Send your questions to the chat. But the next season starts up pretty quick, right? Yeah, February. Mm -hmm. And it will be in the same area, exploring in the Hawaiian Islands region. And a bit south into the remote Pacific. Uh. What is that one in the foreground? Is that a Chrysogorgia of some kind? Yeah, let's take a look. Go ahead and push that in there, please, Dave. that way. I think so. Hmm. Huh. <laughs> but I don't know. It's yeah. really pretty. Yeah. It's very pretty, whatever it is. Come full wide there, please, Dave. It's a black coral in the background and another Chrysogorgia, different one. That's some nice diversity. I'll get caught up here. Do do do. The viewers asking if there have been any thoughts of putting a manipulatable camera on Hercules' arm so that you could look into or under things. 
Yeah. Yeah, I think so. And Renny, you were saying the other day that some of the new manipulators have that built in. Uh, yeah, the I think the Schilling, Schilling? brand has, has a camera on the tip. Yeah, I'm not sure if uh, for operations. If it's been done on Herc, but other vehicles have have uh, done that. One thing that's really cool when you do that is you can get awesome lighting effects. So like everything we see is lit from yeah. front basically, but you can get kind of side lighting and mm. get yeah, like backlighting. Yeah, it's it can make for some awesome imagery. That's a good point. Yeah. First one of the crews. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's in time for the last watch there, Adam. <laughs> I think that calls for a telestrator emoji. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tempt me, man. I got some, some dangerous options back here. <laughs> dangerous options. Ooh. Yeah, this, I think this is a bit deeper than we've seen this kind of like diversity. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Mm. Yeah. It's, yeah, it seems like right on the edge. Diversity of the corals or? Yeah, when we've seen kind of collections of a bunch of different corals species on the same boulder, that's usually up above 2,500. And maybe it's just a function of the terrain. How shallow are we coming up to on this dive? What's the? 1,800. 1,800. Hold off here. Do, do, do. Ooh, what's that purple thing out in the distance? It's a holothurian. Holothurian, I would say. <sighs> I think I have a little bit of leash. I can go over there. We have a viewer asking if coral have roots or do they just grow on the surface of the rocks? And we can see that they're attaching to the rocks with a structure Could called a hold in there, fast. please, Dave. They'll be a little far. That is a holothurian if I've ever seen one. A large holdfast, it looks like, or the yeah, right used to be. Uh, could be. Pull right there, please, Dave. Could be that. <laughs> My guess would be sponge, based on the size of the sponges we've been seeing. that linear bit over there in Argus, is that a wall or a drop-off? Well, I think a drop, probably a drop-off, right? Because the sonar looks like... Yeah. Yeah. Uh, looks like there might be some... Yeah, just like a... Oh, it's not either. Oh, no, it's a wall. Oh. Oh. Thought maybe it was just a change in the color of the substrate. Rock, yeah. It's both a wall and a drop off. <laughs> yeah, okay, so a long. We have a six year old viewer named Alex who's asking why we need two ROVs. Oh, Very well. cool that Alex is watching. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we use two ROVs uh, for a couple of reasons. So one ROV is really heavy. Argus is really, really heavy. And so it's separating the movements of the ship, kind of how the ship is moving up and down in the water column from Hercules. So we can fly Hercules around really smoothly. And it also, we put some instruments on it called sonars, which 
allow us to see, well, not really see, we use sound for sonars in order to quote unquote see the walls and features coming up in the backgrounds in the distance. Um, and we also call Argus the heavier one, uh, our eye in the sky, so that we can also get a good survey or a good look at the kind of the terrain and the seafloor around us. Um, so that's the reason why we have two ROVs instead of just one, is it makes for uh, smoother shots and also um, we can kind of see a bit better and survey the surroundings a bit better. Thanks, Jess. Jess is our Herc pilot. <laughs> Adam, if you were saying uh, they heard an earlier comment that referred to a discussion about the fact that not all the seamounts are related, that their nearby locations are a coincidence, can you talk about that? Yeah, that would be very surprising to me uh, because the seamounts make a pretty kind of continuous chain, but it is a, a bit of a weird chain, right? It, it makes a kind of a backwards J kind of bend. Uh, but from what we've seen on this expedition, uh, it just kind of reinforces the, the notion that they're, they're all related to each other because they have very similar amounts of manganese encrustation on them. But we're going to find out for sure because we got samples that uh, that we can use to look at the chemistry of, of the rocks, which can act like a, a fingerprint, especially when you look at the, the compositions of the elements that are, are kind of minor or trace in them. It's a, a great way to see if things are related to each other. So uh, while we think that they're related to each other, you know, we're, we want to prove it to, our, to ourselves and the rest of the scientific community by using some more detailed analytical methods. Is that a crinoid, Renny? I think so. And it looked like maybe an anthemastis next to it. Yeah. Or no, maybe not. Yeah, that's it. Go ahead and push on in there, please, Dave. There's such a wee little coral next to it. Yeah. Very small. <coughs> All right, full weather, please, Dave. Another Holotherian. Are the ROVs modular or do they have room for future upgrades? There's definitely room for some future upgrades. Um, yeah, we take on, we take off and on sensors and instruments and um, it's really just a frame that's packed full of a bunch of stuff so we can and add and delete things. Delete's not the right word. Remove. <laughs> <laughs> Can we look at that one that's about to be bottom right? Yeah. Yep. There, there is, no, this is the third one in a row. Yeah. I think it's a black coral. Go ahead and push that in there, please, Dave. <laughs> yeah, it looks like a black coral. I don't know if it's a bathypathy, so it's just kind of oriented a bit funny. Longer stalk and Sorry, yeah, it could just be a path of pathy, so it's like drooped down. But yeah. the three that we've just seen have had that particular kink right at the where the yeah. branches come out, facing downward. It's like a scale worm in the background. Yeah. Fuzzy bit. Pull away there, please, Dave. Thanks. Yeah, let's go up. Adam, we have a viewer asking if you have ever seen fresh magma coming out on a dive. Oh, on a dive? Mm -hmm. Oh, I wish. <laughs> I've not personally been in a, 
or well, I've not personally been on a ship, but there have been a couple instances where people have seen uh, lava coming out on the seafloor. The ones that come to mind are um, West Mata Volcano, which is down by uh, Fiji, and that was producing uh, explosions, not because it was coming in contact with the seawater, but because of internal gas. Uh, big bubbles of gas were coming out and making, fragmenting the lava, but also there were pillow lavas forming, and uh, that was down at, I think, 1,800 meters depth. And then um, on the other one I'm thinking of, which I'm totally blanking on, in the Marianas. Oh, that was that was West Mata in the Marianas North, no, in the Marianas Northwest Rota, and that was a, a shower, I think, seven hundred meters, uh, but it was producing more of a pyroclastic eruption, so uh, kind of pumice and fragmental material coming out, but also molten sulfur was coming out. Molten sulfur. Yeah, oh. in fact, when Jason was there, they sat down on something that looked like black crust and uh, broke through the crust into a pool of molten sulfur, which then oh. coated the bottom of the vehicle. I thought that was oh. really fun wow. to clean off. There's a, a lot of chipping going on. But those are the only two deep sea eruptions that have been witnessed uh, like actually happening. Huh. Very cool. And most of the time we get out there shortly after an eruption if we're if we're lucky. There, I know Hercules has been to a mud volcano. But I don't know, is that classify as an eruption or what? Uh yeah, in a in a broader class that you would include like mud volcanoes and geysers. Yeah. Uh in things ejecting out of the seafloor or out of the ground forcefully, uh, but no magma Not involved. a volcanic eruption. What does molten sulfur look like? Molten sulfur looks, uh, you know, very quickly forms little balls uh, hmm. that are bright yellow, so, you know, kind of native sulfur color, and, uh, but also... In, at least in this pool, can make a black crust as well. Cool. That's very cool. I mean, not fun to clean off, but very interesting story. Yeah, that also, it, I think it was West Modern, maybe both. Like, the cool thing about seeing an explosive eruption in the ocean is you can get pretty close to it because the water is very good protection from ballistic ejection and, and things like that mm -hmm. um, but there there definitely were instances where explosions kind of came towards the vehicle and you got a lot of uh, opportunistic sampling <laughs> all over the vehicle <laughs> that's a cool a sponge, sponge. Yeah. so I heard they found a carnivorous sponge on the last watch oh very fun what? Not, that, no, it was the watch right after us last night. Yeah, we collected them. Push on in there, please, Dave. Carnivorous spoon? Yeah. Were they successful in collecting that spoonworm? When we were leaving, it looked like they know. were they were digging under a rock oh. or one. So that looks like the, sure. the, uh, the huh sponge. You know, it's got that mitten shape. <laughs> this is the, the one that's got on the back. It, it has like a bunch of sediment we see them sometimes in like a yeah, bunch yeah. of fingers together uh, but it looks like a single version of that yeah Polyopagon? that looks super healthy i think it's a kind of leaf sponge, but i'm not sure can we get a view of the side sure come a little wide there dave let's get there yeah look you can see there was another branch on it it's like they they stick they're next to each other and they kind of like fit like a puzzle piece and the backside usually is like kind of sedimenty. Like a toasted marshmallow. 
Oh, that's actually a good question for the group, how you like to do your marshmallows. But I <laughs> Slow and golden brown. Yeah. Uh, of course, that's not what this one looks like, so maybe I'm completely wrong about what it is. Not like I had a name for it anyway. It's really thin. Yeah. yeah. A little spatula. Oh, spatula sponge. That's a great name for it. <laughs> it's a really inconvenient kitchen tool. <laughs> <laughs> Makes all your food really hurt. Oh, why, please? Word from the beach is that they did not get a spoon worm. Uh, bummer. Oh, man. Seldom rooting for it. That sponge is Tretoplura. Tretoplura. Thank you, biologists on Thanks. shore. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Asako. Please meet us at the ship, and I'm gonna give you a nice <laughs> surprise. Yeah. Adam, to answer your question, I like my s'mores golden brown and then burnt a little bit. Uh huh. I have to have some burnt char. Yeah, yeah. need that mallard reaction. Uh, nope. What about you, Adam? Um, I like you know a little bit of toast on the marshmallow, but I definitely like to put the Graham character and chocolate near the fire to loosen that up a bit. Okay. <laughs> you know what I did recently? I air fried a s'more. <laughs> <laughs> and it was so good. I really? do I do the same thing, Jake. It's amazing. <laughs> Can someone explain what an air fryer is? Nobody knows. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it even gets toasty in the air fryer. Yeah. So is wow. it is it just hot air? Is it's there like some oil involved? It's a convection oven. Yeah, basically. it's conv yeah. There's oh. no oil. You can cook without oil. Ah, so the frying part's kind of a misnomer. Right, but it makes it crispy <laughs> like fryer. Okay, all right. <laughs> Could somebody talk about the naming process for the unnamed seamounts? Yeah, so the... The way that a uh, C4 feature gets named is through, or the typical way, is through uh, the is through Jebco, uh, which maintains a database of names of features, and it's not it's not easy. You don't just get to decide like we're calling this one Renny, um, <laughs> <laughs> or else there would be so many Rennies out there, you know. Yeah. I mean, it would get very confusing. So there's a Too there's <laughs> a Crabs. whole bunch of a. steps to go through, and for these, you know, I don't think we're gonna necessarily attempt to name them unless we do so in collaboration with the Papahana Papahana Makuakea Marine National Monument. Did I get that right? Yeah. Yep. Um, and they're kind of cultural group um, that would give it give these you know culturally appropriate names it can be gotta useful there, to right? have names especially if you're going to kind of write scientific papers and you don't want to have to keep referring to unnamed seamount abc um, but uh, yeah that's the that's the scoop You can also kind of pseudo name things by just giving them a name in a paper that then kind of just carries on through tradition, but uh, it's not official. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> Pull wide, please. Evasive maneuver. Sort of carnivorous sponge got in there. It's on the porch somewhere. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. Oh. Squat lobster. Do they mate for life? <laughs> Go ahead and push on in there, but please, Dave. We'll see him fly. 
This is a question that goes along with the view we were just seeing. Uh, a viewer asked, what causes the bubbly appearance of the lava that we're seeing? Yeah, so this was probably a <laughs> pile of angular rocks that have oh, been agree, slowly Dave. coated by manganese over the millennia uh, and kind of softened the appearance. So now it looks like a bunch of bubbles merged together, uh, but it probably started as a as a more angular, granular material. Why does, why does manganese crust form in some areas but not others? Or if given enough time, age of a seafloor, it will get coated? Yeah, so... Uh, I think given enough time, it is common throughout the, the oceans, but there may be specific kind of chemical properties of the water that would make it faster or slower. There may be microbial processes that help catalyze the, the precipitation. It's still, uh, for something that grows really slowly like that, it's actually kind of a hard problem to, yeah. to do the experiments or, or watch it in action. Is there a way to expedite that process of deposition of manganese in a lab setting? Speed up time. <laughs> yeah, you. so uh, folks have definitely used like super high power microscopes to, you know, and set up experiments and see if, like atomic layer deposition of, of uh, manganese crust. Oh. Wow. Is that a black coral? Yeah. I think so. That's a nice one. Looks like pathy pathies. Less. Go ahead and push on in there a bit, please, Dave. What's the other one? That... Behind it, too. I think this is the same one that we just collected last time. Are you guys? It is curious, their polyps are a very strange morphology, right? Because they're yeah. just, there's, they don't look like polyps that you would expect, I suppose. These are not the polyps you are looking for. <laughs> they look Full kind of wide, please. Kind of gummy. <laughs> yeah. Another whip in front of us here. Go ahead and start your push there, please, Dave. Jake, can you flip off the lasers for me? Off. Speed up the interrogation rate. Oh, it's beautiful. Pulling a little behind, too. All right, pull away there, please. Question for video, Dave, could you take a question? Yeah. Have you ever considered adding a running on screen timestamp to the video stream? Well, uh, our video goes out to uh, uh, a lot of places. A lot of people are looking at it and that kind of stuff. And anytime you burn something is what we call it. Anytime you superimpose something on the video, what's behind it is gone forever. Uh, and, and, you know, luck would have it. There would be something 
amazing that would get obscured by whatever it is we superimposed on the video. Mm. That said, however, we timestamp every frame uh, of video uh, with uh, a unique time code that's locked to the uh, to GPS and to all the other time uh, that all the other uh, logs and recordings are uh, locked to. And we have uh, metadata, basic metadata about location, heading, dive number, time, date, that kind of stuff uh, that's uh, locked into the video in the closed captioning space. Uh, so instead of doing uh, uh, descriptive uh, captioning, uh, like you would for the deaf, uh, we're putting metadata in there. Uh, and it, then when you play the video back, you can either turn that on or off. Uh, and it doesn't, if, you, if it's hiding something, then you just turn it off and look at what you're looking for. So making an a alternative use of the video technology. How many um, frames per second is the HD camera? Um, 5997. Hmm. 60 frames per second. We have a four-year-old, Callum, might not be saying that right, who's asking, do we sometimes find new creatures on these dives? Yeah. Yeah, we find um, yeah, I think we do a lot. But sponges. it's hard to tell yeah, it's hard right to away, first. especially for this geology watch. <laughs> <laughs> Megan says yes when I ask her. <laughs> Even Steve, who's seen every coral on the planet, sometimes <laughs> he's never seen. It. Yeah, it, it's hard from a video to know if it's a new organism or species, but uh, collect a sample, look at its taxonomy or its you know kind of shape and structure, and then its genetics, and uh, and identify if it's a new species. A question going back to the spoonworms that we were observing last night, and somebody asked if they're edible. You just you'll have to Google, Google <laughs> that yourself. <laughs> the internet says yes. <laughs> but I don't think any of us in here are going to eat them. Nope, gonna pass. Yeah. What if we sprinkle Not even edible an air bits? Fryer. <laughs> 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 yeah. You never know what edible bits is made of. <laughs> they're firmly in the inedible bits cereal for me. <laughs> Question, do we think we're going to be doing some sonar mapping on our way back to Honolulu? Um, if there's any gaps in the existing data, we will. But um, because we're actually pretty relatively close to Honolulu and there's a lot of um, ships that have mapping capabilities that are in and out of that port, there's actually uh, a lot of just radial out from Honolulu, there's a lot of mapping that's been done. Um, most of this area is covered. So Got it. we'll take a look at what our direct path is and if, if there's any ability to deviate with time allowances and if there's any gaps to be mapped in between. That is a long whip. Wow. I think it was resting on the top of the vehicle. Yeah. Wow. Just keeps going. <laughs> <laughs> uh, wow, yeah, you can see it in Argus there. That is a big oh whip. Yeah. <laughs> well, good thing that. I wonder if that has to do with this coral that I lowered over the side. <laughs> <laughs> 2,500 meter coral there. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, that thing is like four meters tall. Wow. That is a big coral. All right, well, 
more we know. <laughs> Looks like uh, this area that we'll be traversing for the next 500 or so meters is a uh, pretty flat in general slope. So it does, I shouldn't say that, it has a gentler slope up than we have been seeing. And there's possibly some angular bits on the way. Yeah, what's the next uh, depth we want to sample from? We're looking for 2320-ish. Okay, so let's see, what are we at now? What was it? So it's about 20? 100, 120, 2320. 2320, right. And we were needing about 120 meters to get there, so we're here. One of our viewers asked if there's an air fryer on the ship. Did anybody bring one? <laughs> I carried that on the plane. <laughs> Your one. Oh, really? I bought a seat for mine. Your one carry on <laughs> bag. <laughs> oh, well, mine fits underneath a seat in front of me there, Adam. <laughs> Adam only uh, travels with industrial kitchen equipment. <laughs> mine flies first class. So. Oh, <laughs> and wow. you were sitting in the economy or coach. <laughs> I treat my air fryer well. <laughs> I saw there was an instant pot of science on the last expedition. Instant pot of science. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Autoclave. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Pretty cool. Yeah, she flew that in with a private jet. If I'm not <laughs> <laughs> The toaster is about as close as we get here, yeah. <laughs> unfortunately, but food's still good. The panini press. There was a uh, yeah, the big to-do about that. when we had a panini press on the ship. Yeah. <laughs> there was a time when it was everyone was making paninis. Everyone was doing it. Out of everything. It. <laughs> backlog. You just line up your sandwiches. Get up there early. Get in line. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now it's full of old cheese. Yep. Took my headset off for a second. I just came back to <laughs> now it's full of old cheese. I guess you'll never know. <laughs> We're not telling you, Adam. Uh, Go ahead and push that in there, please. We Let's all play a guessing game. Had the best <laughs> jokes while you were gone. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have to explain my joke. <laughs> <laughs> that one. Looks like the Militaris, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. There's a little yeah. tiny one after you're done with this one to the right that I was curious about. Roger that. Dr. Rene, coral expert. <laughs> Do we ever, what is a coral expert called again? I know uh, Lindsay last no, there was cruise is saying polypologist or something Pol like that. Polypologist. <laughs> 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 Nidariologist. All right, full wide, please. We've had a few questions about Where was that, that little one. one. Oh. I don't know what that is. It's so wee. It, is it a black coral? What is it? Go ahead and push on in there a bit, please. Good morning. Oh, a tiny black coral. A little black coral, but the weeest of them. Sure. Interesting. Is that a... Sure. Uh, is it something that it's absorbed, like an anemone it's grown over, like we were talking yeah, about? I yeah, calcified. Part of it. Or is it something different? Yeah, oh, on the back side of it? Yeah. Uh, no, I'm going to... I'll go with the first hypothesis. You want to sample it? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> Just identify. Yeah. If I'm going to bug you soon, guys, but hopefully you enjoyed this view. Yep. Oh, why, please. Yeah, you can't have me in charge of sampling. They'll be like, this is the most basic I know, that's why <laughs> fundamental <laughs> of life. That you <laughs> They'll turn it over to the watch lead though and be like, why did you sample? Yeah. <laughs> be like, Renny said it was a good sample. I don't know. <laughs> How do I know? <laughs> He's our polypologist. <laughs> <laughs> so we've had a few questions about how many samples Hurt can carry. I think Great the question. answer is in terms of weight, right? Uh, What's the payload? Size too. 
like we do have a limited number of sediment star, and water right? samples, right? Big sea star, right? We big, do. Big fat so star. Let me write down that big fat star observation. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Large fat star. Okay. Yeah, um, a little bit there, too. We have Everybody. six Niskin bottles on Hercules right now. So the configuration of Hercules can change. Um, we have it set up right now. It's kind of a standard way. So six Niskins on one side and uh, five push, car push cores on the other side. Um, and then seven slurp jars. And the bio boxes are really limited only by, I mean, the sizes. We could get 20 small things or one giant rock. Um, kind of depends. Yeah, the I think the small boxes are probably like 15 centimeters wide, and the big ones are 40. Yeah, 30, Long. 30, 40. Yeah. Wow, nice little pavement here. Yeah. Oh. Little module bed. Yeah. Adam, a viewer is asking if grains of sand in the sediment get manganese coatings as well? Yeah, so um, we've we've cut open a few of these like small nodules that you're seeing right now, and they have some of them have just a bit of sediment inside. Um, in some cases, you find a particularly hard bit of the sediment that that starts the or is the place it nucleates on? Um, it's gonna plug in back there between the two of them. But we're often seeing these like small nodules, so it doesn't grow on every piece of sediment, uh, or else you would end up with more of a continuous crust. Yeah, should be good. Keep an eye. <laughs> Can you hear okay? All right. <laughs> yeah, go zoom ahead a little. We had a question about why the black corals are called that, if they look yellow, and that is because their skeleton is black or dark brown. You can sometimes see that on the close-up zoom. Hey, why don't you get this, keep this on just in case. Dave, can you take a video question? Sure. What's the file size of your videos over a typical 24 hour dive in pixel size? Oh my goodness. <laughs> well, um, for the uh, high res files that we record, 
uh, we're recording in ProRes 422SQ, uh, and those files are done in, all the files are done in 15-minute uh, chunks. Uh, and a 15-minute chunk is about 18 gigabytes. So you'd have to do the math. <laughs> We have a rather large uh, network attached storage uh, that then writes to uh, data tape. Uh, and so that's uh, automatically backed up to two uh, backup tapes. And those yeah, are like spin it. Deliverables then when, uh, when we get to shore, those tapes get set up to uh, wherever it is that they're going to. So uh, they're large files. The, then we also record proxy files uh, in uh, H2.64, uh, and the file size on those for a 15-minute chunk is about 2 megabytes, I think. I'd have to look. Proxy. And then turn it, but you're turning at the same time. Yeah, there you go. That's right. There's a question about how deep we can dive, and Hercules can dive to 4,000 meters, which is a little over 13,000 feet. Yeah. So the proxy files that we record uh, are smaller. Uh, they're recorded in H.264, uh, and they <laughs> are uh, about 600 uh, megabytes. So much smaller, easier to transport. You can pop a few of those onto a under the thumb drive if somebody wanted to look at them on their laptop uh, and uh, they're much uh, more transportable. They contain all the same information uh, just at a bit lower resolution. They still mm -hmm. look pretty good and uh, are good for review. So that's the video side. Great. Yeah, just feather it a little bit, yeah. Sarah, we had some viewers asking about the acorn worm. It did make it. It was in a few pieces, but... Uh, yeah, pe the pieces made it up. <laughs> and it was the first one observed in the Pacific. Was that right? That's what I understand. Just yeah, really that's really exciting. I, yeah, I loved its cool. genus name is Yoda. Yeah. Was its species name Perparata? I didn't Purple? hear the species. I, I was, was busy running the water samples, <laughs> yeah. but I just, I did it over here. It was really The official cute. name is Yoda. Little purple Yoda head. <laughs> And then another viewer is asking what the Niskins are. Oh, sure, yeah. The Niskins, I don't know where the name comes from, but that's our water samples. And they are open canisters. And when we pull a little tab on Hercules with the manipulator arm, they will sh uh, close. So they just trap the water that we're sitting in in place. Oh, um, yeah, we have that on sat feed 3, if you look oh, at the yeah. quad view. There they are. So you, the ones that are the, that you're looking at right now um, are mostly closed because we've already sampled four of them. Uh, the back two should be open, um, so their lids won't be on. And we're collecting that water um, for a study by Coralie Rodriguez, who's looking at trace metals and composition of the water in correlation with the rocks, the crust on the rocks. Viewers asking if we've had any problems with interactions between any of the biological specimens being transported. Um, yeah, actually. <laughs> um, so I believe it was my mistake to put a sea cucumber in with a sea star, and the star had spines on it and just shredded the oh, sea no. cucumber. Yeah. So not an attack, just kind of an accidental. Right. It was, <laughs> yeah, it was just bumping up against it. But yeah, I don't know of any, like, predatory 
behavior in the bio boxes. One of our viewers says, according to Wikipedia, Niskin bottles are named for shale Niskin. So, oh, so it's a brand. A little follow-up from the science chat on the skeleton of the black coral. Um, it is made out of protein, which makes it a little different from the other coral. Yeah, that's why it can survive at these depths. Some of the first things that you start seeing um, as we ascend a seamount is the black corals. Anything made out of calcium carbonate has a hard time surviving because it's actively dissolving because it's trying to live. You had a question about whether the water pressure um, changes and affects the samples when they are brought to the surface. And I think the consensus is, as is that it's more the change in temperature that seems to impact them. Yep. That's or right. maybe even that's some right. of the trauma from the slurp. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah the, the process of grabbing and collecting itself can be kind of traumatic. Um, but yeah, it's the temperature that... Um, makes them not survive, so most of them do not come up alive. And um, they degrade really, really quickly when they are when they get warm. We have a viewer asking what depth we're at. You can see the live data on our website, nautiluslive.org. If this screen is correct, it looks I like think his is frozen. I believe yeah, we're at two four three two. Sorry, I don't know why that keeps getting yeah. turned off. Mine does too. Yeah. I have to check it every 2, time. Two thousand four hundred thirty-three meters is our current depth for Hercules. I don't look at that thing. That's Seven thousand nine hundred seventy-nine feet. And Argus is above it. Thank you. Water temperature one point eight. Degrees Celsius, 35 degrees Fahrenheit. And if you like data, you can click on the link at the bottom of that bar. It says more data and it will take you. Go ahead and zoom, Dave. Lots of info. Hey, he's coming in. It's fine. We're going to have to jut out ahead, though, after we uh, get done with this. Yeah, great. All Thurian, flopping around down there, eating up sediment. All right, yeah, we got to go. Go ahead, full wide, Dave. Yes, that was a sea cucumber, somebody was asking. Yep, that's it. A viewer is asking there if anyone go. has tried to keep a living sample alive after collection, and it would be very challenging Dr. Ballard was talking a little bit about that, though. Someone had a lab where they could do that, or at least keep them alive for a while. Yeah, there's a, you need some specialized equipment, basically pressure vessels that you put a, a organism in down deep, and then you have to maintain that pressure 
up in a lab to keep it alive. So um, folks I know who do that, uh, Pete Gerges at Harvard and Roxanne Beinert at University of Rhode Island. And Heading to the left a bit. Keep alive uh, two worms and, and clams 